Today we have a special guest with us, Hussein. Uh, Hussein is currently in charge of Rasher Christie at University of Texas, um, and he also is a graduate of Texas A&M. So how are you, Hussein? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me here. Sure. So you're over there at that school in Austin that we don't like to talk about. <laughs> Uh, but, but before that, I hear that you have a very interesting story. So, so where, where did you come from and how did you end up at A&M? Yeah, um, so I did grow up in uh, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, which is in the Middle East. Uh, people think that the UAE is in Dubai. It's the other way around. Dubai is in the UAE. Um, I uh, grew up there as a as Muslim. My, both my parents, my family is Muslim. Pretty much everybody there who was born there is Muslim by definition. Um, lived there. I was interested in math. Um, uh, I loved math when I was little. I always, always wanted to be a professor, but later realized that I wouldn't make much money. So I changed my mind later. But um, I did very well. And uh, But in, in mid middle school is when I started doubting my beliefs in Islam. Um, I had problems believing in the Quran. Um, I had a problem believing in God and so forth. And I, all, all of this started with the problem of God's foreknowledge and free will. So uh, that started me questioning all of these beliefs that I had. Um, and then I became an atheist. Um, and I've, been an, I've been an atheist for a long time. I didn't confess it to anybody. I just discuss it, discuss it online. Um, but uh, because of, I did very well in math, I got a scholarship to study nuclear engineering. Uh, in the U.S. and um, at first I went to Georgia where I did uh, English uh, training be because for the SAT and all that it was sponsored by uh, the government. Um, I took a nuclear engineering um, program uh, from the government and so I studied English there. Uh, I met a couple uh, who were interested in discussing religions. It, it happened by chance that I met them oh, yeah. because the lady works at Georgia Tech and all of a sudden, she just invited everybody for Thanksgiving meal. And uh, during the conversation with them, they mentioned that they like to discuss religions. And I said, uh, I'm up for that. So I'll, I would like to come and talk about as well. I see. So, so how did that conversation start? Um, the, the religious religion? Well, or the, yeah, like what happened after? after yeah. Um, so um, I've been there a few times. They would have a group of Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims and atheists and Christians, and I was on the atheist side. Um, and we had very good discussions, and they helped me also understand the gospel from my conversations with them, understand that what the gospel is all about. They gave me a copy of the Bible that uh, I was reading, and uh, slowly I grew my understanding of what Christianity is, uh, and before you came to the U.S., did you have any exposure to Christianity in, in any significant way? Uh, no. All of my understanding of Christianity came from the Quran and how the Quran describes Christianity. I mean, you're familiar with how the Quran describes Christianity. It, it, it basically describes two or three doctrines and mis, a misunderstanding of these doctrines and bash them. And so that's what I thought of Christianity pretty much. I see. So uh, one example of that might be uh, the teaching on Marian dogmas, perhaps? Uh, yes. So the Trinity is a big one. Uh, uh, the Quran describes the God and Jesus and Mary were a part of the Trinity. Um, and somehow that's wrong because Mary is not a part of the Trinity, pretty much. That's the argument that goes in the, in the Quran. Or that Jesus didn't die, um, but somebody else died in, instead of him. I see. Uh -huh. So when you came to the U.S. then and, and, and met this um, uh, missionary couple then, uh, they walked you through all the the understanding for, I guess, a more correct understanding would be. Would be the... Yeah, exactly. So they helped me understand what Christianity really is instead of just showing me what the Quran says or other people said about Christianity. And um, I I also did talk to them about apologetics. Uh, I was familiar with apologetics when I came to the U.S., reading different people and what they think of apologetics, and reading a lot of atheists, and they bash apologists too. Um, and they always challenged me with the argument from the resurrection, that if you can prove that the resur resurrection didn't happen, then uh, Christianity is false. And that what 
opened my eyes to the reliability of the Bible, uh, the reliability of the story of the resurrection. And through that story, I came to believe in Christ. Um, I, I was convinced totally when I moved to Mecca, which is College Station. <laughs> uh, so, in those conversations you had with various religious organi- or various mm-hmm. religious people that would come in um, and talk with your host family, uh, did you find yourself uh, more on the side of your host family, or did you just kind of wing it and say, "Nah, I'm an atheist. All of you are wrong." Um, when I was an atheist, you mean? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would be pretty much an atheist. I will be with the atheist side. Um, I will be bashing Christianity, bashing Hinduism, bashing Islam, bashing everybody <laughs> else. And I would have my atheist group that would support me too. So, uh, and, and I didn't think of Christianity back then as true or even close to, be, to the truth. Um, so I didn't, I didn't defend that view. Okay. So then you said that they consistently challenged you, particularly on the historical um, basis. That was like the main Im- uh, impetus for your conversion? Um, I think so, yes. The, the, and they were very clever because, I, f- to be honest, I mean, I was fam- very familiar with the, all the other arguments, um, the moral arguments, the Kalam, and so forth, and I wasn't convinced by them at first. And I always thought, even if they were true, you you still have that step to go to Christianity. Um, and I didn't think of the argument from the resurrection as a, a good one either, because of my background as Muslim, I thought the Bible is not reliable, so I don't even need to begin studying the subject. But the fact that they were stressing that that is a very important part of Christianity made me think I maybe really need to prove them wrong by studying the subject, and I was proven wrong afterward. So. Yeah. So, could you kind of walk through through that step? So, where where did you start with um, your investigation into the resurrection? Um, I th- I think it started with first I was when I was reading the story of resurrection in the in the Bible I was very confused because it was so different than what Islam wants me to think, um, that Jesus died. I mean, the question first, why did he die? And then then he resurrected. And why would Christian believe that a God can die and then resurrect again? What's the point? Um, so reading the gospel itself shocked me uh, because I had no understanding of the resurrection. But then when I started reading the 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 evidence for the resurrection, I think Habermas was one of the uh, people that influenced me reading uh, on this subject. But at f- first I needed t- to establish that I can rely on the Bible for certain stories to be true. Um, I didn't believe that the Bible is reliable. I believe that this is all myth. Uh, it's not true and it was miscopied and so forth. Uh, pretty much uh, Ehrman's argument. Um, but uh, I don't remember the books that I read uh, back then. Uh, but uh, when when I f- realized that there there are good reasons to believe that the Bible is reliable, I started changing my argument and say, maybe it's reliable, but it's not truthful. And that's where the, the argument from resurrection comes in. And uh, Habermas was the uh, most effective people uh, when I studied the subject. Mm-hmm. I see. So I imagine there was probably a pretty exciting day whenever you talked to your host family saying, um, actually, JK, I'm a Christian now, instead of... <laughs> Being an atheist, um, y- yes. Uh, actually, actually, knowing you, it probably wasn't that much fanfare. <laughs> it's probably much less. Uh, so, when it 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 just happened all of a sudden. In fact, when I moved here to to Texas to College Station, I was still an atheist. I read the literature that I needed to read on the resurrection. I was still an atheist. I didn't want to believe um, till one day, uh, just sitting down and. Um, all of a sudden, that all made sense to me, and um, I believed in Jesus, and, and then I told them. I, I was actually l- both uh, happy and sad because now I have to deal with my country and all the, the stuff that I need to deal with as, uh, as a Christian because I can't lie uh, if I would need to go back and so forth. And how has that shaken out so far? 
it went well. I mean, I, I got an asylum in the U.S. and I'm uh, and then I got a green card and I'm working on my citizenship. Do you still talk with your family back home? Uh, yes, I do talk to them uh, every now and then. Um, they're they're Muslim still. They all know that I'm Christian um, and they don't want to discuss anything that has to do with uh, Islam and Christianity. Uh, although my sister is the most open to the gospel, she she would love to like to discuss uh, the Bible with people. And um, there used to be a person in the UAE who go uh, who um, I know and will help my sister learning the the gospel. When you first came to the U.S., you were very unfamiliar from uh, of Christianity. I think that's very true in the inverse here. Most Christians have very basic or incredibly misunderstood. Um, grasp of, of, of Islam. Uh, what do you think would probably be the the biggest pitfall that, say, a an eager Christian evangelist needs to avoid if they're talking with someone with uh, with an Islamic background? Um, th- this is a tricky one. Uh, the reason it is tricky is because Islam is an identity uh, plus a religion to most Muslims. So to show that Islam is false or that Muhammad is immoral or anything of that sort, and I think that's what most apologists would do. I think that's really the wrong approach because Muslims will immediately be on the defensive side and then they don't want to talk to you anymore. Even if you're, even if you're wrong or right, they just don't want to talk to you because you're insulting their prophet or their religion. I think the best approach in this case is to discuss Christianity and what Christianity has to offer, what are the pillars of Christianity, the doctrines, and what Jesus did, and um, and how we got here, and so forth. And to contrast that with the Quran, without bashing what Islam believes about these things. I think that's the most effective way, because then Muslims will be interested in building a relationship with you, uh, learning from you, and you learning from them. I also I kind of know the story of Hussein uh, from Texas A&M uh, after and leading up until you graduated in in 2015. Um, so what what's been going on since then? Uh, well, the reason I left A&M, uh, I know I'm a heathen. I went to to Austin for a job. <laughs> Austin offers all these material things that attract uh, <laughs> believers. Uh, but I moved there uh, for work, and uh, since I was in Rasu Christi here, I was also interested in seeing what Rasu Christi is uh, at the University of Texas. Um, and so that's how I got connected there immediately. So if if someone wanted to be involved with RC at uh, University of Texas, um, what, what channel might they go through? Um, we have the website, uh, rc-utexas.org. That would be the best way. would have all the uh, social media links. Uh, we you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Rasha Christie U Texas, or RC underscore U Texas with Twitter. So I see. Um, uh, what what's the uh, Slack workspace for? for uh, we're not space? happy yet. <laughs> well, we're going there maybe sometime in the future. But right now we have Google Groups. Just just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, before we go, is there anything any last thing that that you'd like to say? Um. um I'm very thankful for what y'all are doing uh, for uh, the ministry that y'all are having here at the University of Texas A&M. And uh, I think this this apologetic project, this Russia Christie project, is very, very important, especially at this time. Um, when people rejecting the gospel for things that are so non-relevant to the gospel and will attach it to some scientific evidence, then the surface they would say, oh, I, I, don't, I don't believe in God because of science or because uh, Christianity is horrible or evil, uh, whether socially or politically and so forth. And I think this, the apologetic project is basically eliminate all of that and help people see uh, the gospel for what it, what it is. Hussein, thanks so much for your time. Thanks. Appreciate it.